Thank you all for joining this morning. I'm talking with Francine Nash this morning about health and courage. Yes. Uh, Francine, you are a, first of all, you're a registered nurse. Yes, I am. And you help, do you help people with building a healthy body? A healthy everything. <laughs> so, so, so you are the one, one of the ones that are out there uh, pounding the pavement, telling us not to eat so much junk food. Uh, yeah, I am the <laughs> one that everybody loves and hates at the same time. <laughs> So tell me this first, coming from a health perspective, how would you define courage? Okay, courage, I define courage as daily actions to conquer, to conquer yourself, to conquer your doubts, to conquer your fears, to conquer everything that comes in your way, trying to tell you, mm, yeah, it's a good idea, but don't do it. When you conquer, when you push forward and you mm -hmm. get the resources mm -hmm. and you go and you do it. Mm -hmm. In spite of all those voices, that's courage. So courage for me are daily actions. Okay, so we don't, courage is beating that, uh, that, that negative voice in the back of your mind that says, uh, who do you think you are? You can't do this. Or uh, you don't have the right background to actually do that. It's never going to work. Yes, yes, that, that's courage to really go evaluate and i'm not saying just go and do whatever now i'm saying is having the maturity and the honesty and to analyze to check with yourself and to go gather whatever resources that makes you stronger to go and do it go get it <laughs> now how does that from a health perspective Okay, and I'm, 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 I guess I'm dancing around with it because one, <laughs> I'm one that does not exercise and I eat a lot of junk food. Okay. I, I, I'm the potato Sorry. chip girl. I'm the potato chip girl. I tell all my friends, potato chips is a vegetable. <laughs> oh, yes, it is a starchy <laughs> vegetable, but it is a vegetable. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. So how do we, how does courage affect health? Okay, that is... You know, when you make the high mileage questions, you're going to have the high mileage answers. So how, how much do they have here in time? <laughs> <laughs> so um, first of all, I want to say stop me at any time because those are things that I have so much passion. It's mm -hmm. so close to my heart. Mm -hmm. So at any point, I can start to going on and on and on. And um, so feel free to stop me. And Got it regroup so courage affects health courage affects everything um i say when i introduce myself to to anybody i say i'm francine and i'm a, a mother i am a wife i am a, a health coach i am a nurse case manager a daughter mm -hmm. and there are many pieces of me and it's very very important to learn how to nurture each one of the parts of you to find what each one of the parts of you need in order for you to be healthy as a whole person. So that's how courage affects uh, our health. Because if we have desires, if we have dreams, if we find our mission, but we are holding back for whatever reason, mm -hmm. we are not going and looking for the resources to have the courage to conquer, to have the courage to take that action and make that change and go for whatever it is that is the, the, the expectation, expectation and desire of your heart, that will affect your health. You're going to become frustrated. You're going to become depressed. You're going to become sad just because and many times people don't even know why. They say, I'm going to work every day. I have a family. I have this. I have that. I don't know why I feel this way. And as you start to talk and as you start to plan and as you start to reveal yourself to yourself, many times with assistance of others, but sometimes just do try. Try to do that exercise with yourself to talk about your feelings, your desires, your, your plans without limitation, just to talk to you. Okay, so when I, when, I, when I talk to myself, does it make a difference if I do it quietly inside or if I do it aloud? 
It depends of how you feel more comfortable. I always encourage person to take their personal time because they feel free to really open up to themselves. Many times they don't. Many times they, they hurt too much doing that. But um, many people, they feel comfortable to really get deep and be honest doing it with themselves. Mm -hmm. Once you did that, once you identify and put down on paper, then you need, you must find somebody else to go talk to. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's a coach, if it's a friend, if it's, it's a brother, but you need, because you need somebody to hold you accountable for that. We are human <laughs> beings. We are there's, human there's, beings. There's that nasty little word, accountability. We don't like accountability, do we? <laughs> we don't like accountability yeah. at all. Once we say out loud, once we put everything, uh, someone else in the game, mm -hmm. it becomes a compromise. It becomes so much bigger. So we don't, that, that's why accountability sounds uncomfortable so many times, because now you have to give count to someone else. It's not just you telling yourself, oh, girl, you work so much. You are so tired. It's okay. Don't do it today. You're going to get a phone call from somebody saying, what did you do today? Let's do it. Let's get it going. And that's uncomfortable. But that's the way we get to the next step and to the next, to the next. By moving. Okay, let's break this up. Let's talk about physical health. And then after that, we will go into the emotional piece of it. Okay. So with physical health, why is it that so many of us take it for granted, I guess, because we don't. We don't work out. We don't exercise. And a lot of us during the pandemic did absolutely. No I mean, we made our bed, our desk. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and the most walking or exercise was back and forth to the kitchen or back and forth to the bathroom. Yes. Yes. So it is so hard because we have, we all have those big ideas of what exercise and eating well should be. We have all those preconceptions and all those one fit, uh, one recipe fits all. Mm -hmm. And um, that doesn't work anymore. I'm sorry. That doesn't <laughs> work anymore. Because people are understanding that we are individuals with different schedules, with different needs, with different wants. And when we try to fit ourselves into a model that worked for someone else, mm -hmm. many times we get nowhere. And then you say, I cannot lose weight. I'm eating well. I'm exercising. Yeah. You're eating well based on what? Compared to who? Designed by who? <laughs> so uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing is we got to find, and I, I, I don't think it's the second thing. It's the same thing, but it's another part of the same thing. Got so it. we got to find to move, to exercise. So 20 minutes a day goes a long way. I heard someone, I cannot remember the name. If it comes to me, I'm, I'm going to say, is an athlete. And this person was saying, if you have the dream of running a marathon, mm -hmm. you first have to transform that dream into a lifestyle. So you have to become a runner and you have to make that a lifestyle until you get to the marathon. Because if you're just going to go and train for that one marathon, run that one marathon, and then do nothing after, that's not going to do for your health any good. Sure, you're getting, you're preparing yourself, you're making changes while you're preparing for that marathon. But then you did that. And how about the rest of your whole life that you continue to need exercise, that you continue to move? So it's okay. Prepare for that one marathon. But find something that helps you every day. 20 minutes of something that gives you pleasure. And then is the part that people love and hate me. They go, Frisian, I love you, but I hate to exercise. How am I going to find something that I like? You know, okay, there is something that fits you. There okay. is. Some people like to dance. Something people like to play video games and think about that, play video games. Some people like to hold on, just hold on, hold on. walks. Video games is exercising? So let's get to that. A lot of people say, what are you talking about? Nowadays, nowadays, we have an assortment of video games that is so much different than in my time. My time, I had an Atari, which right. I do have one in <laughs> love it. And I Nintendo. With a joystick. And right. that was it, sitting down. Nowadays, when I look at my daughter playing the, the 
whatever it is, a PlayStation, Xbox, whatever it is, there are so many other instruments attached. So she has games that are like a, a, a fight. Ah, like the and Wii, I guess Wii Tennis. The Wii. Wii so Dancing. Are, okay, okay. Exactly. So there are people that are very competitive and they like video games. So let's try to transform that in something that gives you some benefit. You can play just your favorite game if it's sitting in time. Okay, separate your time for that. But once you have pleasure in video game, let's find something that you can combine that pleasure that you already have and add something that brings you a physical benefit to you. And that's a, a, a point of, for many people, they say, I never thought about that. Yes. And that is, all... something, that is something that can be done in the privacy of your home. Because yeah. some, some people say, I don't want to exercise because when I go to the gym, everybody is skinny. Yeah, I don't, want, I don't want to exercise because I don't feel safe walking around my neighborhood. You know, I don't have free time until the sun has already set. So I don't want to walk around my neighborhood in the dark. And those, right. are the, those are the excuses that I hear not to exercise. You're saying take some of that coffee money, invest it into a we, and then start to do the we associated hey, exercises exactly let's turn the video game into a physical benefit and not just to a fun time of playing games you can also have that fun time playing games bring your friends play with your kids mm -hmm. but make sure that you separate 20 minutes every day to do a wee exercise or let's say uh, i've been to companies that they have a break room and inside that break room they have playstations xbox they have different things so maybe you are not so comfortable exercising from other people, but maybe you have a time you can make your lunch time. No, don't make your lunch time your exercising time. <laughs> Use your lunch time. But maybe you can have a break time of fifteen minutes that you know that it doesn't. It, the other people are not there, or maybe you can make an effort to come to work fifteen minutes earlier when you know that it's quiet and do that 15 minutes. So I've been in to, to more than one companies that in the break room, they, they understand the need of people nurturing different parts of themselves and they have awesome playrooms. Maybe that's something to use. Maybe you don't want to use the gym at your work, but you want to use the playroom to exercise using the Wii. So okay. there so is, that's, I'm sure that's everybody here, <laughs> by the way. So, the, so that's exercise and that gets the, the body up and moving, the blood pumping and that, helps our physical health right yeah. now let's talk about the mental health and the emotional side of it all right the emotional side for me as you might have noticed and many people many times have been seen uh, let's try to separate and i i can technically separate i can as a professional i can separate but it's very hard for me when i'm working with someone to make that clear separation because like i said we are different parts of one whole person mm -hmm. so the way i see when you the, the first thing to do it many people come to me and they say the weight i think that's the, what i get the most people come because i i have a focus in uh, functional nutrition so a lot of people say uh, i need to lose the weight or i need to get stronger because i have a competition i need this i need that and then when i start a session with someone i'm first gonna give them seven different points of on their life that I wanted them to think about it and to go to that room of honesty with themselves. Okay. And that, put that, a note. that, that private room of honesty within ourselves, where within ourselves, where, my husband is saying hello. And if I don't say hello, goodbye. And if I don't say he gets really upset. Bye brother-in-law. Bye whoever you are. <laughs> He gets really upset if I said, on, I'm on camera, I cannot kiss you now. Said, but I'm a, your husband. And, and I, I'm so glad that this happened now because, like I said, I have many pieces of me makes my homie. And that is important for him. If it's important for him, I make be important for me. Right. And everything goes a little bit better. So anyways, going back, uh, when you go to that block of honesty, I have seven points. Can I call seven pillars that I like people to tell me about a little bit. But I tell, first take what you separate. And I give them um, zero to one. 
So we don't have to go zero to 10 because sometimes 10 is such a big number. I have to have this much. No, zero to one, just put a little number where you are. On one side, put it where you are. The other side, put it where you would like to be. Okay. People, is this, hold on. Is this an exercise that we can walk through right now? Uh, I think we can quick, quickly do so. Okay. Uh, get a pen and a paper. I'm not going to give you all the seven, okay? I'm going to okay. give you three. Okay. So uh, spirituality. And when I say spirituality, I don't want to bring you to any religion. You know what fits you. I don't know if you have or not a religion. Spirituality is your time of concentration, of understanding that there is a power that is bigger than yours. Yes. Who do you call for when you need? Mm -hmm. So that's that. So spirituality, career. Okay. Hold on. Profession. Hold on. Mo, get, get a uh, pen or a pencil and a piece of paper. We're going to walk through this exercise to uh, improve our physical and mental health. Well, we started with number one, spirituality. Francine, spirituality. We have to do two numbers, right? You said two numbers. One so number. on your left side, okay. on the left side of it, I usually make a pyramid. So you can make any form you want, but I usually make a pyramid and I divide in seven. So Got divide it. in three, because we are going to do only three. On your left side, you are going to put numbers zero to one only. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, where you are right now, as far as your spirituality. Okay? Got it. Uh -huh. And you're on your right side, you're going to put, where do you want to be? So let's say on your left side was 0 0.5, but you really want to be a 0 0.7. So 0 0.7 on the right, 0 0.5 on the left. Got it. So that's for spirituality. Let's get career and physical health. So two is career and three is physical health. That's right. Check. Got it. Okay, so you have those three, put your numbers and leave the number there. So after you leave the number there, and usually I'm fast forwarding here, usually we take a couple of days with this exercise, but after you put the number, I'm going to ask you to work on explaining to yourself why you are at the 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. And what a 0 0.7 or a, a 0 0.8 would look like for you. So let me explain. Let's say your yes. physical health, I have there a 0 0.3. And say, why? Why are you giving yourself that grade, that score? And say, oh, because I'm eating a lot of potato chips and I don't like to exercise. <laughs> but, but, hey, potato chips is a vegetable. I will stand <laughs> on that until my last day. <laughs> so we, you can continue to have potato chips. Okay. And yet to 0 0.7, but how? So then I'm going to dig a little bit deeper. I said, okay, so you believe that you are, have 0 0.3 because of potato chips and no exercise. Right. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how you like to move. Do you like to dance? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you questions. Let's we can, say, sure, have, yeah, dance. Let's say dancing. I love to dance. I love to dance, yes. Excellent. So I'm going to say, all right. Do you believe you have 20 minutes a day that you could just laugh out loud and dance and have fun with yourself? Or do you think you could separate 20 minutes every day that you could call your husband and say, we're going to have a dance party? So it is not, it does not have to be structured, aerobics, one, two, three, one, 10, three reps of, of <laughs> three reps of 10 of 30. It doesn't have yeah. to be that structured. No, to be honest, that's where I wanted you to get, but I'm going to walk that journey with you. What okay. is important okay. right now is to understand where you are, to really, truly understand what you are. Got it. And to really, truly identify what we can use to your benefit, what you like, what you would invest time and make that and turn that into your benefit. And then once we identify that, we, the rest of the journey, we're going to walk together. So sure, as a professional, I'm going to tell you, there is a certain heartbeat that you have to have to achieve a minute for a certain period of, uh, period of time in order to burn a certain amount of calories. So we are going to get there. Maybe those 20 minutes of just dancing at first is not what is really going to change our physical health okay but it is the beginning point and it's very important that we identify that because we are nurturing certain parts of you by dancing okay so so it is starting where you are yes and creating the time 
creating because because once you become conditioned that that 20 minutes every day is available to you you can move up from the dancing every day to something that is a bit more structured and pointed at or or for the parts of your body that you actually want to work on or change excellent once you create that (laughs) habit in that time okay that is now part of your life and not a restraint, like, ah, I have to do that. No, now it's part of your life. So let's... So you trick people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Frizzy, frizzy, yes, 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 that's what you do. You trick people. Because when we come to you and we say we don't have any more time in the day, um, let's say physical health is a point three. I would like for it to be a point nine. Say, I want to lose 50 pounds. Right? Let's deal with weight. Weight is something that is popular. A lot of people do yo-yo weighting. Yeah. Okay? And you say, well, make a playlist of your favorite songs. Make that playlist last about 20 minutes. In your home and and dance. Just be active and moving for that 20 minutes. So then, then all of the positive energy endorphins everything starts to move and it makes that 20 minutes a very positive experience you yeah. think you think you're yes. smart <laughs> so <laughs> i would say you know first thing you triggered us people, uh-huh. okay i tri- you tri- oh my dog is shaking here and the camera is shaking so people I, I, you are not the first person to tell me you tricked me into it i said uh-huh. no uh-huh. i just helped you to see things that you could not see before. It was already there. So our body is the most, you know, the smartphone, the last one is what, the 13, the 15, I don't know. The smartphone is so smart, the kids said it has everything. Our body is smarter than the most smartphone you can ever find. Because <laughs> okay. in, in the background, you're saying, oh, you got time to do everything you want to do. You figure out this exercise and you'll figure out time to get that done as well. Okay. Excellent. Oh, okay. Excellent. I, 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 I teach your game. You I can teach your game, Francine. I can teach your game. You oh, trick, my you, God. You're tricking us out here. Okay. Now all you're right. telling all my secrets to the world. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, but that affects the physical and the mental, the emotional at the same time. Yes, and that's why for me it's so hard to to separate because once you find something that gives you pleasure, like you said, you have all those good hormones. It's, it's, it's chemical, you know. It's really chemical. It's scientific. So you have those good hormones that that, that releasing all over your body, and then it's bring you pleasure. And when you have pleasure in something, it's helping you in so many other parts. It's mental. It's, it changes your behavior, it changes your attitude, it changes your desires. And then it's much easier to conquer and to make this. Some people say, I'm never going to change. I'm just going to use those 20 minutes and I'm just going to dance. And then uh, six months later, three months later, some people a month later, they are going to a full 45 minutes you know, of a class because now they say, I love to dance. And I'm here dancing with a group of other people that love to do that. And then that jump that you made, now you're working so much harder on your physical because you find something that gives you pleasure. You change the mind, you change your habits, and then everything starts to fall into place. Okay. People don't believe when I say everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm. Uh, I doubt. Mm -hmm. It does. Follow the process. (laughs) Hey, Preacher, how are you? So, Francine, okay, so we talked about the physical, the connection between the physical and the mental, the emotional, and that gets us into a very energetic and positive space. So now let's talk about it, bringing it down, and how people can quiet their minds and how having that peaceful time actually takes them to a, a very peaceful and healthy state and how that affects the body. Excellent. Wow, that's an excellent question. I love that. So I have a lot of people that they have, they are working three, four works, and then they have kids, and then they have home, and then they have, and they are running around. Uh, and this reality is uh, of, of today's 
day. That that's what it is. Um, and people say I have time for nothing. I have uh, energy for nothing. I I need to quiet down. And I, or I have people who just have one job and have no kids, single, but they also are on that sty state of mind that is so going, going, going all the time, yes. boring. Um, it, to bring it back is very hard when you think the first thing that comes to people's mindset i wanted you to learn to teach me how to meditate or i wanted yeah. me to teach i love tai chi tai chi shua and a lot of people say i want to start to train tai chi and i said that's awesome that's excellent but that doesn't mean that it's going to calm down your mind for some people meditating creates more chaos than relaxing wow really wait a minute that's that's Let's dig into that a little bit. Yeah, and please, people don't, that love meditation, I love meditation. <laughs> I am addicted to it. I meditate every day. But, it, but, but, it's, but it's what you do and how you do it. How, yeah, what you do so, and how so you how do is it. it. How is it that people are misusing meditation and what they're doing is actually creating more chatter versus more chatter. bringing their so, mind to a restful state? Meditation is not that time of taking all thoughts out of your mind and just being in a quiet space. We cannot do that. Flash news. As human beings, we cannot. We cannot just empty our minds and be in a nothing space. There is always something, some thoughts that will come, even when you are in a guided meditation. And for many people, that time of quiet is just going to allow them to bring more thoughts because if you oh now this is empty so your body have a reaction if you are used to that your body will have a reaction to rush thoughts to your mind to bring you to a place that is familiar to you so for some people it's familiar to be always agitated always thinking so your body want to bring you to that state to calm yourself down by running your mind so it's important to find something again that you like to do some people they like to walk. Okay. Some people, they just like to walk indoors and not looking at anybody, not many, not a lot of agitation. So you could have a treadmill at home in a quiet place because that action, that physical activity, that walking is going to bring you to a place that you calm down. That's how your body works. So we're going to have to work and identify what is that that make your body, your physical body relax to a point that your mind is not rushing to find something to think in order to bring you to a familiar place. You're already feeling the pleasure. Your body is feeling the pleasure of that action you were doing right now. So your mind allows you to enjoy that action and not bring more thoughts. Did I make sense? So give me, give me some more examples. Like some people use walking. Yes, yeah, some people use walking. Some people use... Um, Tennis. I have a lot of people that they love to play tennis. There is another name, squash, not playing tennis, yeah. squash. And you play with the wall. So you are in that space with yourself and you have to focus on the ball because I have already made exercise exercises with people that they were playing squash or playing other games that is very fast and you have to focus, focus to be present on that activity. Yeah. And then I start to talk and try to bring other thoughts you hit that ball so hard, the ball comes and you are not focused on the activity. It's going to hit you and it's going to hurt you. You're going to remember the next time. So the next time, you are not going to try to put your mind somewhere else. You're going to be present on that moment. But it, it, it cannot, the way that I said was as a punishment, that's just an exercise. I don't punish anybody. <laughs> but uh, you, you cannot go and punish your body into calmness. You have to find something that is pleasurable to you. So people that enjoy squash because it brings you to a point of focus and being mm -hmm. on, only that, do that. For people, so, so do you feel that um, just being in a quiet space and maybe lighting a candle and using essential oils or using a sense of smell and concentrating on how that smell makes you feel. That's wonderful. That's wonderful for some people. Mm -hmm. And we have to identify if it's for you. I love long, hot showers in a bathtub. I'm sorry, it's not so respectful to the, the ecology in the water, but I love. <laughs> so I don't do every day. But that's something that brings me to a piece of relaxation, peace, and to feel that hot water and to relax. So for me, many times I put essential oil and I can 
calm myself down, calm my mind down and reorganize my mm -hmm. thoughts mm -hmm. and make my plans. Usually I do that at the end of the day because then I go through my calendar sitting in a bathtub. I go through my calendar and I plan my next day. It works for me. For some people would cause for them to be more agitated yeah. because while they are sitting there, they are running rent. Because I'm a person that likes to use a sense of smell. There are certain smells that I like that evoke certain feelings and whether it's a nostalgia um, and, and I'm, I'm not in movement. I'm actually still and can concentrate on the smell and my breathing. And, and that for me brings a lot of calm for me. Right. When and it's excellent. And for many people work that. And another thing is the point what it, in everything, the point where you start, that doesn't mean the point you will end. So a lot of people, they say that meditations make, meditation make them more agitated, that, that quiet and peace make more agitated. But once they start to work on the other parts and work on time management and work in so many other parts and nurture each part, start to find the balance in each part, maybe now meditation will be for them because they are in another space. Yeah. Usually we don't work, um, being a nurse, I work a lot with emergency room with things mm. that we have to start, we stop the bleeding. Yeah. And that's what we have to do at yeah. that point, uh, at that point. But once you stop the bleeding, we have to go back and see, okay, what is the root? What's the cause? And we have to fix that. If not, the bleed, it will continue. Uh, and with life, everything is like that. Many times ago, I cannot meditate. I cannot sit still. I cannot, okay, let's try to evaluate. Let's run and evaluate. And let's work on those different pieces. And when we find what is causing, and sometimes it's many pieces, sometimes it's one little piece. And once we start to work on that, then we can work on the things. I see people that they start uh, like, I can never sit still. I can never meditate. Okay. It doesn't let's, work for me. Let's, let's, bring meditating. It, let's bring this full circle, right? Sure. And let's that's, that's wrap up everything that we've discussed into courage. Okay. Now, now that we have all of these techniques and activities and things that we can use to improve our physical health and our mental health, why is it that we don't have the courage and oh my to, 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 to execute? That's a big one. That's a huge one. So people don't hate me. I'm a lovely person. I love all of you, <laughs> but I got to be honest. Mm -hmm. We get comfortable on what we are. We get comfortable complaining of whatever we are complaining. We get comfort, comfortable lacking whatever we are lacking. And we, when we keep ourselves in that position, we always have an excuse to go to. So if I run a lot all day and I work so much and I have five kids and I have this and this and that, and I don't have time to do anything and everybody sees that, if I don't stop and analyze and start to create and change the habits, I can always go back to that. And it's the excuse to myself and to everybody else. Yes, so, I'm gaining weight, but I'm doing everything else. Right? So it's easier to maintain that. It's, it's a comfort zone. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. It's easier to slip back in and stay in the groove of our comfort zone than it is to actually put in the discipline to make the change, but we aren't developing that, that courage within ourselves. Yes. And, and I, I guess not, it's, it I'm not saying back. that it's hard, that, that it's easy. I'm not saying it's hard. Things really exist. People are not lying or inventing things. Life's happen. Life happens. And li life yeah. many times is hard. And we have, we are grown ups. We have responsibilities. I'm not saying liar, liar, pants on fire. Mm -hmm. You change whenever yeah. you want. Life, yeah, it's life comes like at that. you fast. Life comes yeah. at you fast, especially if you're working three jobs, you have children, and you have a marriage that you must maintain. Because each one of those children, they have their own schedules and their own lives. But as the parent, you have to stay on top of what it is that they're doing especially in these days and times because it used to be that if they were in the home they were protected because you could control you could turn that television off 
Yeah. You could turn that radio yeah, off. And that was the, right, that was the extent of the access that the world had to them. However, now it isn't like that because whether it's the phone, the television can connect to other people. If you don't know quite how that works, because I know some grandparents that are raising their grandchildren, and it is a struggle. It's extremely difficult for yeah. them to stay on top of this social media and these connections that can be made through like some of the games that we were talking about, how, the, how they can be connected to people in other countries, yes. how they can be connected to people that do not have good intentions for your children. Yes. So uh, I say a lot to a lot of people, um, we have too much of everything nowadays. And what I mean by that, we have too much information. Yes, I said too much information. People said, oh, information is always good. It's always amazing. But information without action is only information. And when we, are, when we get all these massive amounts of information that we don't even know where to place, we don't even know if it's useful for us, but we are just getting this information because we don't want to fall behind. Everybody's seeing so many things. It's going and, so many places. We don't want to stay behind. And children pick up everything. Everything. Well, yeah, you, we think, well, oh, they, they don't understand. <laughs> yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Hi, Yoko Mama. How are you this morning? Hi, Yoko. Children pick up. So information is good when it comes in trunks and chunks and what you can control yes the the, the the thoughts around it where you can around it. when you have I, I always say when you have where to place that information so okay i saw something on youtube and blah, blah, blah. okay excellent you're gonna sit you're gonna invest time to watch where are you gonna apply where are you gonna place that information and please don't get me wrong i'm not saying education information is is so great we have to go for it but we have to understand we are living busy lives we are living demanding times so if we just accumulate information without knowing where to place it we are bringing ourselves to a place of anxiety to a place of frustration because when we look around and when you look at social and i love social media we are here because of social media but when we are getting all this information and then comparing ourselves with the pictures that we see Oh, that person got that information and made a million dollars. Oh, that person got that information and got a degree. Mm -hmm. Oh, that person. And they would say, I got all that information too and I got nowhere. What good is that giving to you? You don't know what that person went through to get to that place. You, don't, you cannot just say, was that information that I didn't use the right way? You don't know what's behind Instagram. You don't know what is behind the picture. So I'm saying all this to say information is great, but we have too much of everything nowadays. And because we are just running and trying to stay afloat with everybody else and not afloat with ourselves, with mm -hmm. our needs, with our family needs, just get the information that is useful, that is needed for now and live in this present moment, apply it now to what I need now. Because of this running around, we are just driving ourselves to, to places that are not so good. Now, in all, in all of that running around that we do, there is there is little to no time there to prepare food but when we purchase food that is already prepared <laughs> it is high in sodium and or sugar <sighs> that is so much to say about that so so and sugar oh, sugar 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 right. a times. Oh, so, so when you go through let's say you know you have that latte for, you know, first thing in the morning, I won't call that breakfast, but first thing in the morning, you have that latte. You go throughout the day as a break where you eat potato chips. During lunch, you might grab, grab a, a sandwich from a local shop. Uh, dinner is one of the fast food joints. Okay. Oh, my God. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> that is no. life, especially, especially in these major metropolitan areas. Sometimes I'm on the phone with my friends and back when we were uh, commuting, right? Mm -hmm. when, we, when we weren't on lockdown. And they would call me, hey, V, how you doing? They would call me as I was getting in my car. We were both getting in the car at the same time, right? 
Vanessa, we were both getting in the car at the same time, but I'm in traffic, right? And my friends that live, say, down south in the smaller towns, they have gotten home, put in a load of wash, and have started dinner, and, I, and, and I'm, still, I'm still sitting in traffic. So, so the, the hustle, the grind is real. I understand, and I completely understand. I feel for you. So uh, I cannot tell you that the, the, the option it is <laughs> to just find helpers that way. Yes, you can continue to buy. A, a disclaimer. So I have a profile with my sister on Instagram, and we put Sister Sisto every Friday. My sister and I, as our therapy, we go out together, we have dinner somewhere, and we talk. And there is no <laughs> limits. So no limits. I'm not a big drinker, but um, there is no limits on drinks. There is no limits on type of food. And we post a lot of that. And a lot of people ask me, so Francine, but you're so like conscious on nutrition. That's my day. Okay. And that's not the only day on my life. That's something that I need because I'm nurturing other parts of my life. So it's okay. So for you, I'm bringing to that because when you say about the potato chips and the buy. Okay, it's okay to do it as long as that is not your everyday life. Because if it's your everyday life, maybe because of your fast life, mm -hmm. you need to continue to do that. But we are going to have to start to make, do a study around where you live. Where are the health stores? Where are the health food and restaurants or more cautious prepared uh, food? So you can find other alternatives and continue to live that lifestyle because it's part of everything else that is going on in your life. But we just have to be more conscious. Where are you buying? What are you, you really buying? You want to continue to have the French fry, the, the potato chips every day because they're crunchy and salty and give you something extra. It's not just the taste. <laughs> okay. okay. So let's make that part of your lunch with your sandwich. But what is the portion that is gonna you are going to be eating? And what is in that sandwich that will balance that chip? So there is a way to fit your life. And I do understand life is real. You are not making that an excuse. That's your daily living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because so when, what else when can it, we change around to make that better? For when you? it comes down to when I look, okay, I'm standing at the cashier. And there are fruit baskets at the cashier at the sandwich shop. But mm -hmm. that but that banana, one banana is a dollar and fifty cents. And the chips <laughs> <laughs> and the chips are say ninety-nine cents. Mm-hmm. Okay. I understand that. Ooh. And I'm with you. Now, <laughs> last week, last week I went so I'm I'm in the Boston area mm -hmm. and I'm very, very um I have the privilege to be able to every Saturday go to a farmer's market, which is not too far from me. Okay. And the fruits and vegetables that I get there, I usually buy for the week. And I pay at least, at least a third than what I would pay in the supermarket. Okay. But I have to wake up Saturday early morning because I like to get there when they are setting up and I like the fresher and I like because it's local and the price is a third. But did you see the compromises that I had to make? I had yes. to up. I was in a party last night. I said, mm -hmm. my, my God, one of my goddaughters had a sweet 16. Oh, this nice. morning we had the live at 10. So I had to make the time before, even though I went to bed late, because that is important to my pocket. If I don't do that and I have to buy fruits, veg vegetables elsewhere, uh, that would affect my budget, which is another part of my life. And the affecting my budget would affect my husband, my daughter, affect other parts of my life. So mm -hmm. I'm making very broad, and I don't mean to guilt play anybody. I'm not bringing guilt into play. But it's just say, once you work on a, your whole life and you start to make those small changes that it will become a lifestyle, once things are more in place, you are going to find where do I compromise that supplies better other part of my life. So when you are in a cash register, it's easy to go for a French fries. And you already know that for French fries, no more chips. You already know that. You already told me that's how it happens. So how are you going to change? What are you going to change in, in a whole life? Okay, so that, let, me see, let me see if I understand this. Let me see if I understand because what you're saying is, and for, for me... Um, single, never married, no kids, okay. all the way, all the way up to 
the mom that has uh, three kids and is working three jobs and is maintaining a marriage is that sit down with your children, you know, depending on their age with your children and look at everything that you do in a given week. And then look at what is available around those places you go. So if one is in karate and another one is in ballet and another one is playing soccer, while they are practicing, could you take that 15, 20 minutes to run to the local uh, a Whole Foods or a healthy shopping mart versus waiting until you're hungry during lunch at work? And then you got the chip. <laughs> And then if you, if you include your children, you're passing on the legacy of healthy eating. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> versus, versus that continuance of uh, snatching whatever is available wherever you are in the moment that you're in. Because that's not a healthy choice. That's perfect. You said it all. But I, I'm always very, sorry, I'm always very careful bringing this this whole final result into a speech that is five minutes, that's 10 minutes that people cannot interact and especially in a, on a life. And why I'm so careful. It's not because I don't believe. It's not because I don't know that works. It's mm -hmm. not because I don't know that it's true. It's because people are going to take that those few moments and they are going to say, it's easy said than done. You don't know my life. So that's why it's so important to understand the beginning of the life. When he said, we are going to sit down, we are going to see all those points. We are going to tell ourselves honestly where we are, where we want to be. And we are going to start where you are, walking that journey. Because the final picture is that that you, all, you painted right now. There is a way. Yes, there is. I don't know what is the way for you. I don't know where you live at. But there is a way. And the kids, the kids the will time. actually, the kids will actually get excited as you, you know, travel around, whether it's you're driving or you're on a bus, picking out, hey, there is um, a local market that says they have fresh fruit. Or um, there, there's a sign that says farmer's market on Saturday mornings. Uh, maybe we can go there before we go to my game. The first time, we can just go to see what's there. Don't put yourself under so much pressure to get everything done the everything first time. Done. Exactly. Go the first time and just scope it out, see what's there, see if you like what they have. Get the flyer, know what times and dates that they are there. Then fit that into your schedule. Next time you go back, go for one particular item. This time I'm coming, I'm going to look at the fruit and I'm going to buy two or three pieces of fruit. Then we're going to take that fruit. It goes in your lunchbox. It goes in my briefcase. Exactly. And this is how we're let, going to make that change incrementally. Yeah, let your, let your child choose that, uh, a fruit. Even if it's not the one that, uh, say, oh, you don't like that. Let them choose. Let them pick. And then if they oh, I don't like it. You chose it, so let's try now. We all mm -hmm. try, and we know if you really don't like it, the next time we are not going to buy or let's say, let's not buy a pound of it. Let's buy one because you're going to try. But let them choose. Let them participate. Let them feel that they have a say. And then you come with your corrections. Don't, don't squash right there because then the kid is not going to see that as an activity that is fun, but as a duty. You don't want that. Don't, for any of, of activities and things that we change, we don't want to see that as a duty. We are responsible professional adults, and we know that we have responsibilities. But if we bring a little bit of understanding, let's have fun, let's enjoy. Even if it's hurting now, oh, my ending goal is this, this, and that, and I, yeah. it's so good. Let me hurt for now. But you have the pleasure we need. As a, a, That's how our brain works. For We need satisfaction. We need, and, and people many times say, I don't have time for this without understanding that when you make the time for the things that you need, the times that it, the, for the things that you must will come. Okay. Well, thank you very much for this interview, Francine. Is there, any, is there, any, is there any parting words that you would like to share with no, everyone before love, we end the cast? I loved our conversation. Thank you so <laughs> much for this opportunity. Thank you so much for your questions. You really drove all the, this, this conversation that many times can be heavy, but you drove in such a fun and light way. So thank, thank you. you so much. It was a pleasure to be here.
Nah. See you.